As a hand to hand combat instructor for the U.S. Army Rangers, what are two of the most important principles of close quarters combatives that everyone should know? Um, when it came to the combatives, at least for the military aspect, I mean, if you're going to use it in a real life scenario, the biggest two key principles that I would say that they'd have to keep aware of is situational awareness and commitment. I mean, you have to be aware of your surroundings at all times, doesn't matter what, I mean, because you never know what side of the corner or where the person was going to come from. And once that, I would say, that threat came towards you, you'd have to commit. You have to go for it. You can't stop halfway. You have to go 100%. So I'd say those are the two biggest, most important ones. If you could only recommend one martial art most suitable for a close quarters violent encounters, which would it be and why? For me, out of all the arts that I think are the most functional ones, I mean, I love Kali, I love Silat, but I sometimes think they're one and the same. So I would have to say Kali, the Filipino martial art. So I mean, it's definitely combat proven, you know, um, it has all the ranges to it, uh, stick, knife, um, empty hands, groundwork. So, I mean, to me, it actually develops more of an attributes where you can transition from weapon to empty hands in a close range scenario if you had to really use it either for military aspects, police work, or self-defense. It has every, every range you can possibly think of. As a full instructor in Bruce Lee's Jun Fang Gung Fu, the art and philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, how has Bruce Lee influenced you as a martial artist in person? Well... As a kid, you grew up, you know, oh, Bruce Lee, you're a fan and everything. And, uh, but as the years go on, you go learning more about the art, the philosophy. To me, uh, the philosophy of Jeet Kune Do is probably the best thing that, that can really, it's probably helped me grow more. And I mean, uh, people like Guru Dan, uh, Burt Richardson, uh, those guys in, in Sifu Fong, they make me look at martial art, not just as the art aspect, but how you can research it how you can develop the, the techniques or the tools that you learn from these and really kind of make it your own, you know, because it's not going to be exactly how you, you train it and you have to kind of make it your own to be able to pass it on to your students and yourself. So I think the philosophy of JKD as far as researching and developing, creating and you know, developing your own way of doing it is probably the best part. What are some misconceptions people have about realistic knife attacks and knife fighting? I would say is the, the biggest misconception as far as knife attacks is people think they can actually pull off a disarm right off the bat was at least the way they learn knife techniques in, in the Filipino aspect. They say, oh, I learned how to do a disarm here or there. And I think that's probably the biggest misconception. I mean, and knowing that you're gonna get cut in a knife situation is something you have to accept. And like I always tell my, my students, people train with me, a weapon opportunity is always the best thing. And if you can, if anything, you can take off and not be there. That's probably the best thing you can do. But disarms is probably the, the hardest part that people always think they can get. And it's really a big misconception as far as that's concerned. I've heard some people say that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or grappling in a street attack or a bar fight is a bad idea. What are your thoughts on that? I don't say it's a bad idea. I mean, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has changed the way martial arts is today. Um, grappling has been around as long as we can, uh, we can think of it. I mean, it's always been around. I think it's important to know it and understand it because if you're in that scenario, you don't want to be on the ground in a real life situation. You, you know, either be in self-defense in the street or even for military people. You want to be able to get up off the ground and be able to do what you have to do to protect yourself and recover from that situation. So understanding it, it's really good because it helps you understand what you need to do to get back up on your feet. That's the best part about presenting you to or, Submission grappling, any way you look at it. I mean, when it comes to real situations, you have to understand how to get up. I mean, because there's no way you're going to say you're going to stay on your feet the whole time. You may trip, that person may get you down, that person gets you down. You want to get back up on your feet. If it's more than one person, you definitely want to get back up on your feet. How important is mentality and attitude in martial arts? I think it all depends on what you come, what do you want to get out of the martial arts? People that come train with you in martial arts, uh, everybody comes in for a different reason. Some people want to do it for fitness. Some people want to do it for self-defense. Uh, some people do it because they actually love the art itself and they want to learn about the, the art, the culture, the history of the art. And then you have those people that want to become fighters. So those are different categories. So everybody comes in with that, that, that in mind. You have to look at this student and say, okay, what are you looking for? What can I provide for you? Because that person coming to you, you may not be able to provide exactly what they're looking for. You know, you have to accept that fact. Not everybody comes for uh, what you think it is. You may love the art as an instructor because you just love the history and you love teaching it, but everybody has different uh, 
intentions behind it. So when they come with that different intention, their attitudes as far as what they're learning from you is going to be a big factor. Through your training and deployments as a U.S. Army Ranger, what is your advice for persisting through adversity? Don't give up. Always keep pushing forward, you know, and uh, always uh, continually teaching or doing what you have to do. I mean, um, when you're training and you're learning stuff, it's not very simple. And it's not always going to be the best day for you, but you just have to keep pushing and training and becoming better at it. You have to find what's going to work best for you. And uh, I guess, you know, just being persistent and always pushing forward. Always looking at the better side or the good side of what you're learning. You know, everything has its goods and bads. What are the main differences when working with civilians versus military or law enforcement personnel? Well, the biggest difference is what you can teach them. I mean, even with the military and law enforcement. The military, depending on who you work with, you can teach, everything is open, you can teach whatever you want. I mean, um, and even though the military, just like the police officers, they also have rules of engagement, but the military's rules of engagement may be a little bit leaner versus the, mil the, the, the police or the law enforcement. Where law enforcement, they have to be able to, you have to be able to teach them things that they can use to subdue the, the, the criminal or whatever would be the case. Civilians, the same thing. You have to make sure that when you teach civilians, you have to make sure that they understand whatever they do to defend themselves, be it they're not the aggressor, but they're defending their life. They have to understand that whatever you do to that person, that you know you can go to jail for that, no matter what, because they're all, their laws are laws. And so you just can't go out there and just do whatever you want, being a civilian or military. You still have to follow either rules of engagement or the laws that we have here in the United States. Much respect and many thanks goes out to Juan Perez of Combatives Unlimited in Orange Park, Florida for taking the time and energy to sit down and do this exclusive Ask the Expert video series. My training under Juan has been an extremely valuable and inspiring experience. Aside from being an incredible instructor, he's also a humble and genuine person. What makes Combatives Unlimited an elite and unique martial arts brand is the focus on functional, realistic, no-nonsense training and the emphasis on self-discovery and personal evolution. Many instructors and schools teach by what-ifs and choreographed techniques, having no real-world experience. Not only is Juan trained with some of the best martial artists in the world, such as Danny Nosanto, Larry Hartzell, Eric Paulson, and the Machado brothers, just to name a few, he has put his skills to the test in real world combat as an airborne ranger. Bottom line, if you're serious about defending yourself and surviving real world violent situations, go check out Combatives Unlimited in Florida or contact us to schedule a seminar in your area.